This time on pedal box, we're taking a big step towards getting the car put back together by adding all of this sheet metal to the inside. We're finally really starting to tunnel down into this project. First up this episode, we're going to take a quick look over the tunnel which I installed last week and it took me two days to beat this into shape. I had done a lot of work previously bending it to fit and actually it was still sitting proud off the top so there would have been a big gap and then the handbrake wouldn't have been able to bolt down securely without a big dip, just wasn't going to work. So I spent two days beating and welding this in, mostly off camera because it was obnoxiously loud, miserable work in kind of inclement weather but it's all in now, it's all seam sealed all the way down the side, which again wasn't kind of the plan, but it's how it went. And there's a few more bits that we can get installed now and we can start moving on to the harnesses. Now we've already got two harness bolts in the side of the car down here from the original build, but because we've moved the seating position forward a bit, I think they're gonna be a little bit too shallow of an angle because in the MSA regs, you do have sp set distances and angles that you need to mount all of your harness points to so that you don't fall out of the seat and it actually holds you properly. So we're gonna pop a seat into the car, low, low that down and put it in my position because that will give us what is probably the most upright uh, position for the harness mounts to go into, which I guess is probably gonna be around about here. And we can compare that to the one on the back on the outside of the car, sorry, and see how much further forward we need to move this, if at all. I'm hoping we don't, but I'm pretty certain we're going to have to. So now we've got the seat in, we can see roughly what position this is going to come to. And now the belt has to come across your lap and through this gap in the seat here. And this is approximately in the position that I have it forwards to backwards with a bit of space behind me in front of the cage. So we know that roughly in line with the back of these uh, mounting points for the handbrake is where I need this bolt to be. And we know approximately how far forward Chris needs the seat in front of that because it lines up roughly with there. So we can get a good idea of what the angle is going to have to be for this inner mounting point and more importantly where we're going to have to weld it in. And now you can see the problem. Where Chris's shoulder managed to line up with this hole in the back of the chair, mine definitely don't. And if we did have a harness bar at a regular point round here, my harness would go down underneath here, around and have a bend in. So it wouldn't tighten properly and it would inevitably end up snapping in any kind of impact this part of the chair. So that's no good. So we need to get some bar, as Chris says, that will suit my shoulders above the seat and his shoulders through the holes of the seat. Hopefully we can reconcile both of those things in one. So now I've pulled the seat all the way forward and I've put a bar in here to represent the top edge of where the harness bar is. This isn't exactly where it would be, but the harness bar would be 46 mil, same as this, or 44 and a half mil, I think, below that. So the center point would actually be about 20 mil lower than where the bottom of this bar is, and that's roughly where the harness would attach to. So this is a piece of inch bar. We can put this through, and if we go level off the, off the bottom of this, of, of this box section we've got through here, like that, the bottom edge of this bar would be the center line of the harness bar and roughly the alignment of the harnesses coming through this hole. So that kind of works for where Chris's shoulders were at, which is good news. So now with the seat pushed all the way back, we can line this up again with the bottom edge of this bar going up to and over the shoulder that we measured before. Now if I hold this roughly here, the bottom edge of this is where the bar comes to. So if Chris can hold the angle measurer up against the chassis, we'll get a level, a baseline off that. Okay, so that's within a tenth. And what angle is that currently sitting that at? It's 39. That's 39 degrees, so it's still a little bit high. Chances are it will probably sit a little bit lower because I'll be a bit forward in the seat. Yeah, so that's about 32. And I think you are like a tad lower than that. So. Yeah. So with a bit of measurement, we've worked out a 65 degree angle for the seat belt for me puts the mounting point about 14 inches in front of our firewall. This is the plate that we've got. It fits within the minimum specifications for the MSA's uh, positioning and rules on the backing that you need to put behind it. You can just use a big like three inch washer, but ultimately you need enough square inches or square centimeters surface area behind any sheet metal that you're just bolting into. So we've got a nice big patch of steel we're gonna put behind this sheet metal and we can reinforce it more if we feel the need. And somewhere down here, these are our bolts. 
the MSA also requires you to use a 7 16 UNF thread. So this is what we have here. These are the standard ones that Audi use, so we just pulled these out. We've got a couple of UNF nuts to go on the other side. But first, before we can get this in the right place, we need to drill a hole through the tunnel and bolt this down so we can tack it in place and get everything spot on. Now that we've got the big back half of the tunnel in place, it's time to move forward a bit and get all of this around our gear shifter and everything in place. Now we're making this out of a bunch of different pieces, partly because we're working on a kind of complex shape that we don't know how to fold around, and partly because we're working with relatively small like scrap off cuts and stuff of the 8.8mm we've got left over. Now the first two pieces we've made up are these here, and I think this one fits in just like that, and the other one fits on the other side underneath here and on the bottom of the car where they go up onto the floor we've put these little pieces of L bracket in just to give us a face that we can put like a bead of silicone or a rubber seal or whatever on just to seal it against the uh, ply plywood panels we're putting on the floor. The tunnel is going to be open to atmospheric air from you know through the front where the coolant lines run through so we want to make sure that that air isn't able to get through into the tunnel and then leak out through the bottom of this into our feet so we've put this on as a sealing face and then hopefully once this is all together it should keep our feet nice and warm when we're out on the road. been a couple of hours we've plated in a lot of the tunnel here but we've left a couple of bits deliberately wide open this big old gap here is actually going to be our first piece of storage that we're popping in in a second but everything else has been plated over with nice simple small pieces that we've just sort of tweaked around and welded in place so that's all looking pretty good we're gonna have to flip the car over in a minute and put a few more on the driver's side that we didn't do earlier but before we get to any of that we're going to put in our first piece of storage which is this little bucket tray thing here that Adrian's been making up while I've been welding. We've reinforced the edges so hopefully it should stay in nice and strong and it just drops in in here and we're going to weld that up now. So while a couple of bits of tunnel are cooling down, ready for paint, we can start installing the harness bar. So that's completely independent. Now I've put this beam across the back of here, just some box section, give us a nice level across the car that we can go to, because we know these two shoulders are in line with the floor, so everything should be parallel all the way up. Now I've checked this on the floor already, and then set this to an alternate level, which it does actually make the noise. So now we can start using this, even if the car wobbles side to side, we know as long as we're still in line with whatever this bar is, we're flat. So this is the first part I'm going to install. I've cut this one to length when I was setting up some of the angles. So we'll just make sure that this sits in at the same level as this, and we can weld it in. And that's the other side of the harness bar all in, nicely welded, and we've cleaned up as best we can. Welds actually went down really quite nicely this time. Uh, compared to some of the stuff I was putting down when I put the hoop in, I'd like to think maybe I've just got better at welding, but I'm really happy with how we've got these down. The next big important piece to go in, however, is the main firewall that sits all the way across the back of here. Now, I haven't been able to put this in yet because we had to get into the back to weld in the harness bar, but now that's in, there's actually nothing stopping us finishing this off. So that's the firewall roughly in position. I did make some cuts before when I was testing this just to fit around here and the uh, chassis legs and making sure it was the right lens to go down to meet up with the inside of the firewall on the lower half in front of the engine. There is one more bit that we need to fab out of this, however, because we need to bend this back, because if we put this all the way forward, we're not going to be able to get the belts around this harness bar very easily. So we need a little bit more space around the back of there, and then this will be ready to go in. So after no small amount of cutting, bending, fitting, and scratching up what little paint we have on the car, we now have a firewall that actually fits in really nicely and gives lots of clearance around the harness bar to be able to get in 
for, well, putting harnesses on really. We put a, a piece of inch box across the back and some of that 50 mil tube we were originally going to make this um, roll cage out of, laid it down on the table and just leaned it over so we get a really nice uniform bend that's at a wider radius than this because this is only 44 and a half mil tube. The 50 mil tube obviously would give a, a larger radius again and then setting it back gives us all this room. So this can now be welded in and we can start uh, really putting it all back together. This is the main thing that's been stopping us putting the engine in, which is kind of cool. Well, I call that another couple of successful weekends worth of work. Getting the tunnel in is another massive milestone for the car. Yeah, it's a really important one for us because now that that's in, there's not really a whole lot more to do at floor level on here, which means we can finally get it off the rotisserie, which is what gives us access underneath. Yep. Getting it off the rotisserie means we can start getting all the running gear back in it, means we can get the engine out of the garage, and that's a huge win for you. Yes. Because that means you can finally make can, space for your VR6. I can get my golf pack apart and actually start putting that together, and maybe it'll get on the track, and maybe Pedalbox will go to a track. What a novelty that will be that isn't, really in, isn't in another country, granted. But yeah, even with this off the rotisserie, we can put the floor on, so that's fine. There's a couple more bits that we need to kind of take a quick look at, but the next big hurdle is sorting out actually some stuff for the dashboard. It's the um, gear cables and the heater, because I really do want a heater in this. I like being warm in winter, and with no windows, it's definitely going to need something. Yes, yeah, so that's one of our next projects up in the front of the car here because that kind of shapes how we build a lot of the instrument cluster and dashboard yeah. arrangement around this. We need to figure that one out. If you want to support us in our misadventures here and get some sweet, sweet merch in exchange, you can jump on shop.pedalbox.show where you can buy any of the merch that we're not Absolutely wearing right now. not wearing this time. I have been wearing a hat through most of the episode, but it's quite nice and warm today. If you don't want to receive a hat, stickers, or any merch, but you still like to support us in an ongoing fashion, check out patreon.com slash pedalboxshow and you can support us from as little as a dollar a month and you'll get access to our Discord. And if you subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell notification, you'll get notified when videos go live and when we do our live streams in the week, because that's normally Wednesday or Thursday, depending on how work allows. So it does vary slightly. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time.